In this video, I'm going to talk about a very specific type of study known as an experiment. Chances are, many of you have already heard that word experiment. It's probably familiar, at least, you know, at least it rings a bell. You've heard of it before. A lot of times people use the word experiment just to mean any type of study, but technically an experiment is a very specific type of study, investigation. And so we have to talk about what makes something a true experiment. So first of all, an experiment involves specific types of variables. Now I have previously uh, mentioned, talked about variables. A variable is anything that can change and therefore it can be measured. Well, in an experiment, you have to have two very specific types of variables. You need to have an independent variable and a dependent variable. Now, a lot of students have had previous science classes of some sort in their previous educational history. So this may sound familiar, but I often find that students will say, yeah, I remember learning about that in a previous science class. I don't quite remember what that is. Can you help me remember? All right, so an independent variable is a variable that is manipulated or controlled by the investigator. This means that the investigator uh, can control how much of the variable is present, what version or form of the variable is present. Um, sometimes it's helpful to use examples. A lot of times when we think of like variables and experiments, we think of things like, like drug studies. Um, Let's start with that example since it, it does work for many students. All right, so let's say you want to look at the effects of a drug on a particular symptom. All right, the thing that you think is the cause in a cause and effect relationship is the independent variable. Now, you may remember that I previously mentioned, if you watch previous videos, the experiment is the only type of research design that allows you to examine a cause and effect relationship. It's the only type of design that allows you to establish causality to say that this variable causes or changes this other variable. With correlational studies, you just say that they're related. With an experiment, you can actually get evidence that one causes the other. So in a cause and effect relationship, the independent variable is the cause. The dependent variable is the outcome, the result. All right, so one way to think about it is your standard hypothesis, your standard hypothesis tested in an experiment is that independent variable causes or changes dependent variable. All right, so your independent variable, for you to be able to get evidence about whether it changes, influences, affects, that dependent variable, you have to have control over it. You have to be able to manipulate it. In a drug study, you can control whether participants get the drug at all. You might have some participants not get the drug and some participants get the drug, or you can have some participants get a high dose and some get a low dose, or you can also manipulate the form of the independent variable. Maybe some participants get an injection and some take a pill. Right? In all of these cases, you were manipulating or controlling something about that independent variable. Okay, let's give you another example. Because in psychology, a lot of our studies are not drug studies. What if you want to look at different um, uh, note-taking techniques and their effect on uh, performance on an exam, score, grade on an exam? All right, in that case, the note-taking technique would be the independent variable because you think that's the cause, and the grade on the test or the exam, that would be the dependent variable because that's the thing you think is the result, the outcome, the thing that is affected. All right, so how could we manipulate note-taking type or strategy? Well, you can have some participants take notes with pen and paper, and you can have some participants take notes on a laptop. Or you could also have different versions, like maybe some uh, record their notes with a voice recording. Uh, maybe some of them do a mixture of writing, handwriting versus computer. But these are all different versions 
All right. So in this case, you have, you're manipulating the variable by the instructions you give to your participants. Say, I'd like you to take notes using this pen and paper. I'd like you to take notes using this electronic device. All right. So the thing that's controlled, the thing that's different is that independent variable. All right. Now to give you another example of independent and dependent variables, um, the textbook that I'm using for class, uh, highlights one of these well-known studies in psychology. Um, and this is often covered in the chapter on social psychology, and I certainly teach about it when I teach a separate class about social psychology. Um, there uh, were some studies, uh, specifically experiments, conducted by the researchers Latine and Darle, um, and I believe that's how their names are pronounced. I apologize if I am, if I am mispronouncing them. Um, and so uh, Latine and Darley were inspired by a news story at the time where someone, it was the Kitty Genovese story, uh, she, was, um, uh, sh she was murdered in broad daylight and uh, it got attention because there were, I don't remember the exact number, it's like 37 or you know 30 something potential witnesses according to the original news story we actually now know that there were problems with the original news story but according to the original news story that the researchers would have read would have seen would have heard about uh there were all these potential witnesses or possible helpers people who could intervene uh stop the violence or at least report it and they didn't and so people were trying to figure out well, why why What's going on here? Why didn't they help? And so Latine and Darley, um, through a you know, series of, uh, you know, from different experiences and things that they read, they put their information together as, as, as researchers. They hypothesized that the number of people present in a crisis situation influences the likelihood of people helping in a crisis situation. And so they designed uh, not just one experiment, but many experiments uh, where they would manipulate the independent variable number of helpers present, number of people present. So in one of their, um, their, their uh, variants of the experiment, one version, they uh, had people show up for a study and they would be uh, um, shown to a room to like fill out some forms or something and then smoke would start coming through a vent and it would start to slowly fill the room and the dependent variable remember the dependent variable that's the variable that is measured it's your result it's the thing you, you think is being affected by the dependent variable you hypothesize that it's being affected by the dependent by the i said it, by the independent variable let me make sure i said it right the dependent variable is being affected by the independent variable. The independent variable is the cause. The dependent variable is the effect. All right. So number of people present is hypothesized to affect or influence the likelihood of reporting that, hey, the room is filling with smoke. The room is, um, it, 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 you know, there might be a fire. And so some people showed up for the study and they were put in the room by themselves. Other people were put in a room with, with other participants. And what they found was number of participants present did make a difference in terms of likelihood of people, you know, going to the secretary that had brought them back to that room and saying, hey, the room is filling with smoke. We need to do something. The more people present, the more likely it was that people would just sit there and be like, oh, I'm sure everything's fine. I'm sure it's fine. Um, and we do address these phenomena more in the chapter on social psychology. If, if you want to know more about why that might potentially be true. But here, this is a good example of how you can have a simple type of independent variable. All right, here, the independent variable is how many people are present. All right, it's very, it's very easy to control that. You said, you know, you invite different people to show up at a particular time. And sometimes it's one person showing up by themselves. Other times they have other, other people with them. And you, very importantly, with an experiment, you always measure the same dependent variable. Everybody gets measured on the same dependent variable, gets measured the same way. And you do comparisons. Ultimately, experiments involve doing group comparisons. 
In particular, most of the statistical analysis that's conducted on an experiment involves comparing means. I think most of you know mathematically what a mean is, but let's, let's make sure that you get the refresher. That's your average, your statistical average. When you average all of the numbers together, the mean or the average for one group should be different for the mean or average for another group if that independent variable does make a difference. All right. If you just have two groups from an experiment, we can call that a simple experiment. You can have more than two groups, but I'm going to focus on a nice, simple, I'm going to have some simple examples with just, just two groups. Now, one way that you can form your groups is by having one group get exposed to the independent variable and one group does not get exposed to the independent variable. That's your simplest, your simplest setup. And in that case, the group that gets exposed to the independent variable, they would be known as the experimental group or the treatment group. And the group that does not get the independent variable, they would be called the control group. Both of those groups are measured on the same dependent variable and they're compared to see if they are different on that dependent variable. Now, a control group, uh, at a control group type of design, it, it can take different versions. All right, remember with the drug study? Well, the control group, they don't get the drug. Well, do you just give them nothing? They might be wondering, why did I show up? They didn't make me do anything. They might give you a fake version of the independent variable. You might get something called a placebo in a drug study that is something that looks like the drug but doesn't contain the active ingredient, like a pill that doesn't contain the active ingredient. It could be a sugar pill, cornstarch pill. Uh, you can also have other types of uh, placebos. You might be doing a, an experiment on a new type of therapy. And some people get the real, the, the therapy that is hypothesized to make a difference in people's symptoms. And other people might get placebo therapy where they show up and they talk to somebody, but they don't do the special stuff that's supposed to be included in the therapy. Um, they've also done studies of acupuncture. Do we know what acupuncture is? It's an um, it's, uh, uh, alternative medicine uh, that uh, where uh, um, needles are placed in the body at certain points. They're supposed to line up with um, uh, like, like energy points, chakras on the body. Uh, and people have proposed that it can help with a variety of, of conditions. Um, the thing is, scientists didn't come up with acupuncture. Uh, and so, but it's, it had become popular because just in recent times, it had become popular for a variety of purposes. And so scientists, they wanted to say, well, hey, can we study the effectiveness of acupuncture? And so in some studies, they actually came up with sort of a placebo type of acupuncture where the needles are still involved, but they don't put them in the specific spots that you're supposed to put them in um, within you know, the official uh, uh, acupuncture uh, training and whatnot. Um, all right, so that's just a sampling of some of the ways you can have a placebo control group, all right? So uh, that's some things about an experiment. Next video, I'm gonna tell you more things, more terms and things to consider when we talk about experiments, true experiments as a special type of design that can be used in psychology.